SCP Containment Breach One of my all-time favourite games, and also the star of my channel, SCP Containment Breach is definitely a fun horror game, and also because it's free, it's also quite easy to access and use. However, it does have its issues, and I'm not talking about SCP-173 killing you all the time. Nope, I'm talking about terrible frame rates. Containment Breach is rather demanding on software despite the fact the game is incredibly old, putting high performance computers pretty low on frame rates as you know with mine, which is why I wanted to create this video. For all you people who have lower end computers that aren't really gaming computers at all but still want to play Containment Breach, which is where this computer comes in, and by computer I mean laptop. This laptop isn't exactly powerful in any means at all, it's designed just to do office work. Looking at the specs sheets for this computer, it's definitely not impressive in any means. It's only a Intel Pentium B960 with 4GB of RAM, which means it can't even use the 4GB patch tool. Speaking of the 4GB patch tool, in the link in the description you can download a file which will allow you to add 4GB of RAM to SCP Containment Breach, making computers with 8 gigs of RAM or higher run the game a lot smoother. Right, to start off, let's quickly download SCP Containment Breach onto the laptop. I actually managed to mess this up the first time, I accidentally downloaded the patch file and tried to run the game from that. Needless to say, it didn't work. The first thing you're going to need to do is, if you're on a laptop, is to enable high power mode or high performance mode on your laptop. This is done by clicking on the little battery icon on the bottom right and selecting high performance. If it's not on the list, go to more power options and it should be there somewhere. Okay, once you've downloaded and extracted the file, you're obviously going to want to launch SCP Containment Breach and, well, get it running. After loading in, we did have a couple teething problems, to say the least. The frame rate would randomly drop down to below the, well, below double digits to about 9 frames per second just in the intro, and freezing occasionally. I thought immediately, well, this computer is obviously not strong enough, but after quickly going to the options menu, after disabling particle amount, disabling room lights, disabling anti-aliasing, and V-Sync, the frame rate shot up back to about 30 frames per second. Consistently. The lowest it ever got really was about 20 frames per second, which still is not too bad, especially for a cheap computer. Even when getting to the dreaded CCTV room, the frame rate stayed reasonably high, not dropping below 20 frames per second. So this laptop costs £70, which costs about $90, which is still pretty cheap for a device. So to recap, if you want to get your frame rates higher on a computer, disable anti-aliasing, disable V-Sync, disable the amount of particles, and disable room lights. Obviously, if all of this doesn't work, you can drop the resolution of the game itself down to the lower settings. I tried this on my powerful computer, and I managed to get frame rates nearly up to 100 FPS, so that's pretty impressive, although it does kind of look pretty silly. Actually, think about it, it does look kind of cool. It looks like something from the 90s. I think the best part of this low-resolution containment breach is the size of the infantry and the hand icon. It's nearly as big as a bloody screen. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not done just yet. Here at Battleforge Games, we don't just do all the simple stuff. We knew that laptop would run the game stably. It's somewhat new. But what if I threw in this? This is a Samsung thing. I'm not actually sure what it's called. Um, all I know, it's got some really bad specifications. These specs being a Intel Atom. N455 running at 1.66 gigahertz and a whopping one gigabyte of RAM, which is uh, pretty low, to say the least. But anyway, we tried launching the game up via memory stick because obviously I don't want to clog this thing up with any more data because it's pretty full of shit anyway. So, managed to get it up and running, the game actually managed to load up and launch, so I tried running it at its native resolution at first, which uh, just led to a crash as soon as it loaded up and got going. Next I tried running it on the lowest resolution that the computer would allow, which was below 300 pixels, which is pretty impressive. Although as soon as it started loading up it would crash. So I tried running it at a standard resolution, which is about 640 pixels by 480 I believe, and well, the game loaded up to the menu, and I managed to even get it into a game. Now the loading took forever, and I literally mean it took at least 10 minutes to load the game, which is ridiculous. And a reward for waiting all that time? Well, it froze for a little bit, and I thought, well, oh, this is probably it, it won't run at all, but it actually managed to start running the game at uh, 5 frames per second. Even when I went to a low demanding area, it ran at about 10 frames per second, and I know the video quality here is pretty pants, but you can see it's particularly chuggy. 
Moral of the story, if you have less than 1GB of RAM, you can't run the game. Bear in mind that this laptop, or netbook as it is, is incredibly old and isn't designed for this sort of thing at all. It's literally designed to run Word documents, and it doesn't even do that properly, so I didn't expect much. A netbook at this spec, at this time and age, you'd probably be able to pick up for about $10 or about 5 quid. It's not even worth buying, to be honest. Thank you guys for watching the SCP Containment Breach How to Run video, I guess. I don't know what I'm actually going to call it. Um, all the specs of the computers used, uh, including my main computer and the laptop I'm using, will be in the description, and maybe links to some cheap devices if you're interested in playing uh, games, really. So yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.